Welcome to another math lesson. This is Mr. Polarski, Algebra 1, Unit 5, Lesson 5-5, five, five, Direct Variation, Part 2. I will be able to use ratios and proportions with direct variations is today's objective. The first example, example 4T, we'll talk about the ratio, and example 5T, we'll be talking about how to solve a problem with a proportion and direct variation. Example 4T, direct variations and tables. For the data in the table, use the ratio to tell whether y varies directly with x. If it does, write an equation for a direct variation. Well, to do this, we have a very interesting pair of equations we have to solve or work with anyway. Uh, the first is the equation we learned about in Lesson 5.5 Part 1 on direct variation. y is equal to kx. Remember, k is the constant of variation. In an equation in this form, k is typically a number, or is a number of some sort. If we take this direct variation equation and divide each side of it by x, the x is divided out, giving us, on the right, divide out, giving us k, the constant of variation being equal to the ratio of y to x, or y over x. So we have k is equal to y over x. This is the ratio I'm talking about here. Use the ratio, y over x. We're going to put y over x in each of these columns. And I encourage you, if you're using the notes that I have available on my website, to pause the video and fill in the charts or fill in and create the chart that you don't have the third column. So you're going to want to draw that in yourself. Back to the equation up here. This is the constant variation for the ratio. So to get this ratio, we took the direct variation equation, the other equation in this problem. If it does, write an equation for direct variation. This is the equation we're going to use for that in a moment. But the two equations I was talking about are here. The equation for the constant of variation that gives us the ratio we're going to use to create our equation for direct variation here. So let's see how to do that. The ratio we're talking about is y to x. So we simply take the numbers in the table, 1 over negative 2, which does simplify to negative 1 half. I say simplify because I move the negative out of the denominator to in front of the fraction, making the whole fraction negative. Here we'll have negative 1 over 2, which like the previous pair of data, we can write as negative 1 half. Here we have negative 2 over 4, which this fraction simplifies to negative 1 half. Since all three of these ratios simplify to the same number, we can say that y varies directly with x, which means we can write an equation in the form y is equal to kx, we're going to use this negative one half as our constant of variation. So y is equal to negative one half x or negative one half times x. This is the solution here. So this uh, is a direct variation. And the reason it's a direct variation is because each of these ratios reduces to negative one half. This one doesn't really look like it blended in with the fraction bar there. We look at example B using the ratio to determine if this is a direct variation. Y over X is the ratio we use. Here we have two over negative one, which gives negative two. In this pair, we get two over one, which simplifies to two. Right here, we could stop because these two ratios are not the same, so this is not a direct variation. And that's because the ratios y over x or y to x is not the same for each pair of data. Example 5, real-world problem solving. Suppose a windlass. Now, a windlass is a device like a crank that helps lift heavy objects, requires 
0.75 pounds of force to lift an object that weighs 48 pounds. How much force would you need to lift 210 pounds? Direct variation problems can be solved with ratios and proportions. And even though this is a proportion problem, I'll start off by looking at or examining the ratio that I will use to set up the proportion. In the first sentence, it talks about the windlass requiring 0.75 pounds of force to lift an object that weighs 48 pounds. So the two units of measure that we are comparing here are force to weight. And I'll write that as a uh, ratio with words. That'll help me set up my proportion. Now this is what I call my the skeleton of my proportion, the ratio on the left, the equal sign, the ratio on the right, and the left ratio I get from the first sentence that we have 75 pounds of force, or yeah, 0.75 pounds of force, to 48 pounds of actual weight. On the right-hand side, I get from the second sentence how much force, three, these three words are the question word, how much force, which means we're going to be solving for force, which needs to be in the numerator, since it, it's a direct proportion or a direct relationship, do you need to lift 210 pounds? That gives me the third number of my proportion. And then I solve. 210 times 0.5 is 157.5. And that is equal to 48x. Dividing each side by 48. get x is equal to 3.28125. So x is equal to 3.28125. It is preferable that you put your variable on the left-hand side. Not absolutely necessary, but it is preferable. This has been real-world problem solving with a windlass. And the previous example, we looked at solving or determining if a set of data in a table is a direct variation or not. Remember, that required using the ratio y over x to find the constant of variation. This has been Mr. Polarski on Lesson 5.5, Part 2, using ratios and proportions to solve direct variation.